What's up, everyone, and welcome to Anchor Watch. Happy Friday. You know, we usually don't do Anchor Watch on Fridays. We actually, we're actually doing an extra show, Josh. Yeah. Tonight. I know. So I'm and, super and excited. I, I thought, I, yeah, I just, I wanted to tell everybody, I thought we'd start off right by saying it. This is my last Anchor Watch. <laughs> <laughs> this week. This week. All right, bye. So anyway, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be doing any more anchor watches this week. So but it's not we... going to be any more like Kelly and Ryan because I always figured you would be like more of a Ryan Seacrest or who's the one that left? They all left, right? I'm more of a Kelly, and you're more of a Ryan. I think so. Although I'd like to think of myself as a Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't even know what to say. Hey, uh, <laughs> also, too, like I'm sure tonight's gonna get weird, and um, already the message, the chat room's getting wild. So, I well, love guys, that listen, all of our friends... we're we're doing this uh, for you guys because we're we're actually excited. We have a lot to talk about, a lot to bring up. Um, you know, we're working on some amazing things. So I'm super excited about that. But you know, we have such a cool group during Anchor Watch. It's like no other chat. Like whenever I'm on with Adam or I'm doing another video, it's this is where like our friends come, I feel like, you know what I mean? And it's just a fun chat. So like, even though we talk about Below Deck and, you know, tonight there was no episode of Below Deck until Tuesday, um, this is fun to get together with everyone. So well, I'm and happy Jason, to be here. This, this is also like, what a week it's been for you and Adam. I mean, uh, like we're going to get into a moment, a little bit what's going on stuff right now, but Adam had huge, not one, but two surprise everyone. He had two huge interviews dropped this week and he's so close to a hundred thousand subscribers. Oh my gosh. Listen, uh, I think, hold on. I have to go look at what it is actually. Cause I think and he's speaking super of, close. And speaking of the whole algorithm stuff, guys, if you could just get it out of the way, please give us that little like. And, and uh, you guys, are, I mean, I don't even know why I'm asking this point. You guys are so good about it. We always end the episode with like 100 likes, which to me just is like shows me like our friends are looking out for us. But how close is yes. he? Where is he at? Yes. So I think he's less than 400 um, away oh, from 100,000. You know, 100,000 means you're like an official channel. You know, he's wanted this like silver YouTube plaque for forever and he's worked his butt off for it. So I'm, I'm really excited. Yep. You know, yep. we're almost at 10,000. So that's good. <laughs> you know, but that's wild. It's Especially crazy. in the short amount of time that you've actually got your channel up and going. I know you kind of had that kind of false start before, but like really since you've been doing it, it hasn't been that long. To have 10,000 subscribers tells me like the content that you're bringing to the world too, people are loving it. So, And it's only going to get better. And I think this show is just like, I kind of sets us apart a little bit. I want to say hi to everyone in the chat. Um, by the way, this is a subscribers only live chat. So if you aren't subscribed, get subscribed so you can participate in the live chat and then hit that like button as Josh said, because it helps us out. It's just a free, easy way to help us out. Rosemary's here, Carolyn, Elaine, um, Coffee Buzz making me laugh all day long. Shan, hey Shan. I was just on Shan's channel earlier this week to recap Vanderpump Rules. That was so much fun. Um, yeah, I'm super excited to have you all here tonight. Joe's I saw, here. I saw Joe in there. Hold on, I'm going, I'm going down. Hi, Sherry. Um, it's so weird because I'm not in my own environment tonight. So it's yeah. You know, where are you? It looks it's kind of odd. You're in a different place. You're just you're yeah. Just, no, I'm <laughs> out on location. I'm out on location. It's crazy. It's like a below deck, you know, location, uh, anchor watch location, kind of nice. Thing. Yeah. Well, you know, go I'm ahead, Jason. No, go ahead. We have, a, we have a special guest tonight. We do have a special guest, and we wanted to talk more to this guest because I feel like we still have questions. Well, and I will fully admit, we hogged this guest time last time, and we didn't have a lot of opportunity for our friends to ask questions. So... So, and no, Adam, it's not the OG Chiefs too. Actually, guys, join us Tuesday to recap... This coming week's episode of Below Deck, we go every Tuesday night for Anchor Watch at 11 p.m. EST. This week, we have Adrian Gang from Season 1 of Below Deck joining us on Tuesday. It's going to be so much fun. Um, oh, she's in the chat. Hi, Adrian. Oh, Adrian's so here. Yeah, Adrian's here. I'm so excited to meet her, pick her brain a little bit, and have her share her experiences with us as well. So without further ado, let's bring up our special guest, Josh. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> guys we had to bring captain sean thank you so much for coming back we appreciate your time we had to bring you yeah. back because i feel like we didn't get enough time with you and we've learned so much about you because you know you josh and i have been talking about a lot of things and we just thought it would be so much fun to come back and do this again well it's great to be here <laughs> Thanks for, thanks for putting up with more of us. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm excited. I'm all settled in. I got, hey, my, uh, I got my hot tea ready. Uh, oh. I'm all ready. Oh, give me a second. Let me get mine. I need right, something guys, to drink. Hold on. Okay, go for it. Sorry. Sorry, folks. A little unprofessional of Jason, but I'm sure he'll uh, I'll be okay. We'll keep busy. Captain Sean, how you been? I'm good, thank you. It's been great. Oh, I see Tess is here. Thank you, Tess. Shout out to you, everybody else. Good to see you. GG. Oh, man. All, all, all of our usuals are here. Um, let me ask, what's the weather like by you? It's snowing. It's actually, it's a winter wonderland here, um, uh -huh. here up on Cape Cod. It's spectacular. It was a beautiful day. Um, if you follow my Instagram, you know I take pictures of the snowy owl that's out on uh, West Dennis Beach. And I went down there today, but there was no owl, unfortunately. So... The, um, hey, Josh, I got my drink. You ready okay, for this, Captain Sean? Oh, I'm all set. All good, right, very right, good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. That was good. Well played, Jason. Well played. <laughs> and thank you. To hook back up right now. Thank you, Coffee Buzz. I appreciate your good taste in art. <laughs> actually i have to tell you i found this awesome photo of two ships battling it's a painting and it was on etsy like an idiot i didn't order it in time gone gone and i kept saying i wanted it in my office jason well played that was good oh uh, you know i mean come on <laughs> listen we're excited it, actually you know what's really cool about doing this show josh is like just so much opportunity that has kind of kind of come with it and also meeting people like I, I got to actually sit down with Adrian uh, the other week. She's super cool. And I just listening to her stories about yachting, because I think, you know, when we watch the show, we don't really know too much about the actual industry and, you know, what really happens with blow deck gives us this much. And we, we don't know what's, you know, what the industry is basically. So um, it was really cool to go see her and then also to talk to Captain Sean and, you know, all three of us right now are working on an amazing creative project. I'm super excited about, we can't say anything about it, but I'm just happy that at least this little show and our little group of people could bring us together, you know? And, and I've learned that you and I have in our ignorance gotten some stuff wrong about yachting and about the ship world. And Captain Sean has uh, been educating us. Captain Sean, I'm going to give you a moment to like think of some of the stuff, but I know there's stuff where you like, when we were talking, you were like, oh, you guys had mentioned X. Actually, no, boys, and blah, blah, blah. Like, you've explained it to us. Um, are there any off the top of your head right now of, of dumb things we've said lately? <laughs> <laughs> Where do I begin? Um, oh. yes. <laughs> you know? Um, well, no, actually, the there's – we covered a lot on the uh, – with, with the last show – um about some of the misconceptions especially like what crew does what but the if anybody's got a if any if any of the um people in the chat have questions why don't we start hearing from them and we yeah. can jump right in absolutely and if you want we could also take a few callers um yeah. a little bit later but uh guys if you want to if you have a question for captain begin Sean, with the tip be <laughs> <laughs> right tip really big and then your question or just put q and your question i'll do one in the chat really quick just so you guys know what i'm talking about like this um, oh, so i do have a question for you captain john i know the answer now thanks to you but I, this is something i think the audience would find so fascinating um how many people on the production team are out at sea with you guys at a given time filming the actual episodes for the season there at one point there's 64 people about on the boat um the so it's a it's a pretty big it's a big production there's uh, you've got sound people 
you've got camera people, you've got production people. Um, then there's uh, just, I'm just trying to count. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a full on, it's, it's a full on production. Um, there's a lot more, I mean, obviously you don't see them, um, yeah, them on camera, but yeah, the, uh, the boat just, just to wire the boat to get it ready for sound for, um, for video is, is, is an impressive undertaking. Yeah. When you told me those numbers, it, it blew my mind because I, I just couldn't imagine that many people on there at once. I mean, the way well, it's filmed, you don't see anybody hiding or anything. <laughs> No, and and the, and the boat is, uh, I mean, the boat like like what was nice about my Sienna had really had a, quite a bit of volume on it, so you could, a lot of people could um, could hide and go and go in different places. So now, That's speaking awesome. of my Sienna, I I um, I don't know. I think we mentioned it last time that you, you actually sold that yacht. I did. I was broker. the bro as, as well as being the captain. Um, I was uh, I was the broker for that deal. And the uh, she now my Sienna has now been renamed Starship. And what happens when they change names of the ships? I mean, because I know you were explaining to me earlier what a refit is and how that works. Do do they change names with refits, or is it usually the new owner who decides to? Yeah, to like take like on the new name. Yeah, no. For instance, like my Sienna was actually it was originally called Gallant Lady, and then when the uh, when the owner when the guy owner of gallant lady sold it to the, to the owner that um, to the current, to the owner that was right before um, starship uh, that was back in 2008, he renamed it new Vita. And then in 2014, when they did the refit, they renamed it my Sienna, which was after his daughter. Wow. And what, what goes into a refit? What is a refit technically? Is that, well, there's a lot of different types of refits like the, uh, like the, my Sienna refit when it was, when it was new Vita, that was really extensive. They um, uh, extended. They actually extended the boat. They made it deeper. They put a keel on it. They put a stern thruster in it. They reconfigured it. The part of the if, if anybody if you if you Google New Vita and look at the boat, it it kind of looks like it's chopped off at the back. Um, yes, begin begin with the tip <laughs> test. You always begin with the tip uh, and then work your way back. Uh, <laughs> yes, and Adrian, you have, you always have a, an invite to the sleep. Listen, yeah, great, yeah, we love you. Um, anyway, so that was yeah, repaint job. They reimagined all the deck space. They they put a helipad on top. Redid the redid the hot tub. It was really really. It was quite an extensive refit. It was I think the final price tag on that was about fifteen million. Wow, wow. Um, okay. We're going to launch it because we promised we would into some questions from. So, first one up is from Miss Shannon in the van. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, okay. How Shannon long van. have you been captain for? Tip, Tip over now. <laughs> um, I got my first captain's license when I was 18, which is relatively young. I got a 100 ton license. And uh, the company that I was working for was called Highline, uh, Highline Cruises. And they made me the captain there. I was the I was one of the youngest captains they ever had, uh, running sightseeing boats and ferry boats going from Hyannis to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. And tip over knob. Hmm. Um, <laughs> the, um, I mean, I'm going to tip because that's kind of like what we do around here is the tips. So <laughs> yeah. Okay, right, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Our next question from Joe Mendoza. Josh, you want to read it? I thought he was going to say, what's the difference between a tip and a knob? But anyway. <laughs> no. It's American or English on that one. What's, yeah. the, what's the difference <laughs> between First, the... Yeah, we've been... Okay, yeah. This is okay. great. I, yeah. Well, there's a couple of different definitions for this, but I'm going to go um, I'm going to go in the, the world that is my Sienna. So uh, on board, like the, the first officer essentially is has the capability to take over command of the vessel if anything ever happens to the captain and he'll have a certain license that will allow him to do that. So essentially he's your second in command. A bosun in traditional nautical terms is basically somebody that takes care of the maintenance on the outside of the vessel, like painting all the repairs, everything, and, and is responsible for the maintenance on deck. Now in, um, in yachting, really, the the bosun's more of a of a lead deckhand 
or more of a special or a, more of a specialized deckhand. And then lead deckhand is exactly what it sounds. So if you had say like a crew of um, like the bosun often I'll swap between like a, like a bosun or somebody that's mechanical. I'll also relabel that as second engineer. So second engineer bosun, I mean, not really interchangeable, but sometimes they are. And a lead deckhand is just somebody that's a little bit more experienced deckhand that can handle things on deck that knows how to properly clean. Like a lot of people don't realize that just the materials on board the boat, like the paint jobs, the, the, all the surfaces and everything, um, they're robust and they're made to stand, withstand like sun and salt water and stuff, but the wrong cleaning product will destroy a million dollar paint job or destroy a hundred thousand dollar piece of stone. And, and that's, and that's the, uh, and that's what basically the, the bosun and the lead deckhand are responsible for making sure that we don't damage the boat just by cleaning it. And I guess, you know, what we saw in, in, I guess not this past episode, but the episode before is Captain Lee getting mad because some things rust. So you, it really is, you're constantly cleaning when you're a deckhand. I yeah, there's assume. there's no, it's like you really, like Joe said, you, you started, or Tess, excuse me, Tess said you start at the tip, you work your way all the way to the back. <laughs> and then when you're done there, you start back at the tip and work your way all the way back. It never ends. Yeah, well, I know just from, this is going to sound silly, but just from fishing alone, if you fish salt water and if you leave that salt water on your your hooks and your lures and all that, it'll destroy it within, you know, a matter of a few weeks. You go to fish again and none of it's good anymore. That's oh, yeah. why, I, and this is a conversation you and I actually had today. I was asking you, like, what kind of materials and stuff are, because are, are, you're constantly fighting that salt water, you know. The, the ocean isn't, you know, made for a well. Boat essentially, so much here naturally. You're, essentially, you're <laughs> creating you're 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 creating an electrolysis generator. You're like you're you're putting metal in salt water, which is essentially creating a battery. And so these boats make their own electricity. If they're not properly grounded, the the metal will literally eat itself. That's, that's insane. That's insane. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, so Mocha Rain has a question. Uh, she wants to ask, what is the best part of your job? And I actually... Talking to people like you, Mocha. <laughs> oh, what a charmer. What a this charmer. is the why he's the captain, guys. Uh, <laughs> no, and, and, that, and that's a little facetious, but not, but not entirely untrue. Uh, a lot of the... I actually like the... Like, during the summertime, I run the high-speed ferries. If I'm home here at Highline, I'd still work for that company. And what's and i like i like the physical actual handling the boat and it's like going back to like highland it's like staying in the gym and you stay sharp and i keep my skills sharp by doing that and so that's a lot of fun just driving but honestly the best part of the like the best part of the job is the people that i meet on this job and and like what i said in in the first interview is like the, is the potential to really change viewpoints um and to make it and to make a difference and and that is Honestly, that is the that's the best part of the job and what really keeps me doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, yeah, I mean, I, mean, it's, I think it's incredible I, that some of the stories you've shared with us and the and to me, it, it wasn't just like yeah, it's neat that you know you could definitely name famous people you've met, but to me, the things that actually excited me were the stories you've talked about, like the moments you've created for the guests when yeah they they weren't expecting it and you just knew. I'm going to do something that's going to really blow these people away. And you totally hit them with it as a surprise. And I just, I really like that approach. And I just think that's, that's the kind of thing that I think separates someone from, you know, taking someone out for a couple hours in a boat or something or giving someone a lifetime experience. And so, yeah, it's so funny, Josh, I think too, when we used to tour, you know, that's how we met was on tour. I think for some of the best moments were, we're meeting, uh, you know, like you and I met each other and we're literally lifetime, lifetime friends, you know? So I think that that is really the best part. I guess that's the best part of any job really. Yeah. Meeting people. Um, all right, let's move on. Cause I want to bring up some questions and also take some callers. Um, yeah. there are some questions, you know, captain Sean is not gonna be able to answer. The show is still on. So Annika, I don't think he can answer this cause we're still watching it play out, but, um, Whoa, right to a tough one. 
Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, that's still, why I was like, Ugh. we're still watching uh, it play out yeah. on the show. But if I don't know if you can comment on that or not, but yeah, I, well, I can only comment on. Um, Again, I wasn't privy to actually what happened. Um, I don't try to, I, I never try to be um, an armchair quarterback. And I, like, I, like I, I get asked to be, to comment on like Marine disasters occasionally, like, uh, like what happened? Um, if you, if you, I'm not dodging the question, by the way, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll segue back into it. I'm not like, and vote for well, me. We're, we're also lucky to have you too. I know, you know, the show is still on and there's, there's still things that need to be played out. And I know, you know, you can't give us any kind of clue as to what's going to happen. So. Well, I could only, I could only interpolate the data that's in front of me. Like if you remember the Costa Concordia, the cruise ship that plowed into the rock, Yes. I was very close to, I was actually in Italy when that happened. I'd gone by that island and a friend of mine that works for um, an organization that's, that's like the FAA, they investigate marine disasters and they try to implement safety things, um, safety programs so they don't happen. And he knew I was there. So he sent me the actual data from the course lines and everything of that vessel. And, I, and so I was able, I looked at the data, he said, what's your opinion? And I gave him my opinion based on the data that, like, holy shit, he went there. Um, you know, <laughs> was, like, Jesus. You know, I'm thinking, what was he thinking? And and that's a territory that I don't like to go into because I can't comment if I wasn't standing on that bridge and I wasn't yep. there when it happened. I can't comment. I can only comment on the data that has been presented to me. So. Say going back to that question, how would I have handled that situation? I honestly can't tell you because I don't have all the information in front of me. I don't exactly know what transpired. What I do know is, and this is how I would have handled uh, not just a situation like that, but a situation where there's tension between two crew members. I think that the ultimate onus falls upon, for, always falls upon management. So if there's a, if there's a, um, if there's a problem and you've got in, and you have an employee that doesn't feel like they're in a safe work environment or whatever, then that problem needs to be immediately addressed. And that needs to be immediately addressed by their immediate superior, which in this case would have been Heather. And I, and I, again, I don't have all the information. I'm only, I'm only telling you what I, what I would have done. And that would have been, been immediately then need to have been, I would have need to have known all the information um, as, as quickly as possible. And I would have brought everyone together and sat them down and gone, all right, exactly what, is, what, what has happened? What's transpired? And I've done this. I had two crew. I'd often have a policy and be like, look, if I get two crew that are at odds and you're coming to a meeting with me, in other words, it had gone to, that stewardess, it had gone to the mate. Now you're sitting down me. You're at the final, this is it. There's, there is no higher authority. I'm going to do one of three things. I'm going to fire you, you, or I'm going to fire both of you. And the, uh, and the, cause you like to swing the ax. I do. Well, I don't like, to, I didn't say I like <laughs> swinging the ax. I'm good at swinging the ax. So the, the situation, I would have tried to handle it as best as, as best I can. But again, the the it, everything stems from the top down. I, you know, if Lee wasn't informed, as he says, he he really wasn't. He wasn't apprised of the situation. Then he couldn't really handle it. Um, and and that's it, it. Somehow it got stuck in it. It stuck in the middle. And it was an awful situation for everyone to be in. And again, um, I don't envy anybody in this situation. But I know if anyone is feel is is like no one no one should feel alienated for um um because of their gender their race or or or, oh, or anything and that's something that i i just i i would not tolerate on on, on board the boat for any reason absolutely well we uh, have an oh sorry go I, have, ahead. I have a couple more there they were towards the top jason yeah uh this one's kind of this one's uh, two are kind of fast the second one i think you're gonna like the answer because you've actually shared some cool things so first one was Captain Sean, you, this is from Betty. Um, she said, you mentioned last time that you liked fishing. What was the biggest fish that you caught? Well, I, the, uh, 
I might have said I like fish. Um, the, <laughs> that's the biggest fish I ever caught. Uh, oh, I can tell you the biggest fish I almost caught. It was, <laughs> and that was in the Gulf of Mexico. It was the Goliath grouper. It was probably about 800 pounds. Jesus. Yeah, Jeez. It was massive. Um, and, uh, the, uh, anyway, we never got it up, never landed it to the boat. We just saw a glimpse. We just saw a glimpse of it. So that yeah. would, that would have been about, that was about it. Other than that, um, uh, I don't know, tuna's bluefish or something, nothing bigger than 30 pounds. Ah, uh, who is the best below <laughs> captain and why is it you? <laughs> 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 Thank you, Adrian. Hey, now this, this one's a cool one. This is from our pal Tess. She wrote, what's the scariest situation you've been in, be it an accident or sudden bad weather, and how did Ooh. you handle it? Yeah, this one will be fun, I think. All right. So I'm just going through my list. Um, <laughs> the uh, scariest situation, the, um, the, one, the one that immediately, I, I guess the the one that immediately came to mind and I don't get, I mean, this is, this is going to sound, I don't know, egotistical or whatever you want. I don't get scared while I'm, um, I, I, it's like being almost in, in, in a car crash or, or whatever. It's like you're there and you, you react and you don't really come down towards the end to like you come down in the parking lot, you get that adrenaline spike and you go. But when you're in a situation where you have to react, um, uh, decisively, it, it, it it's not one situation. It's, it's, it's a domino effect. So I, I won't say the scariest situation that I've been in, but probably some of the most challenging situations that, that I've ever been in. And one comes to mind, we were, we had left Dublin on our way to, way to, to London. And we were in a convoy with a bunch of, uh, a bunch of other boats and stuff. And we had just got to the bottom of Ireland where the Irish sea kind of, like London's like England's here. Right? So Ireland's here, London, England's here. So this bit right in here is, is open water. Anyway, so we just come, we're, we're coming down and uh, Shelton was on watch. For some reason I was awake. Now this is where <laughs> my stewardesses like to used to play a little joke on me. They would make my bed so tight that I'd literally have to like, get into the into the bed so it was kind of like locked into the sheets and this actually saved me from getting knocked out of my bunk so um shelton was on the was sitting in the in the uh on the starboard seat in the pilot house and he looked out of the, he looked out of the uh, starboard window and he just saw like a reflection from the of the running light like and he's like what is that and it was the side of a wave and we got hit Jeez. by this 40 foot rogue wave which when it hit us, it knocked us over about 45 degrees. And like everything in the, in the, it knocked Anil, the owner, right out of his bed, almost knocked me out of my bed. And then we came back and we got knocked over again. And I got up out of the, I went up to the wheelhouse and Shelton's like, Jesus, you know, uh, that was, uh, that was hairy. That was like, it just came out of the blue. Like that was like a rogue wave. And luckily Latitude, it's a great sea boat. And she took it, took it in stride. The other situation was it was coming out of um, Auckland, New Zealand one time. And I hit a set of uh, um, three 30, 40 foot waves. This is like north of like it just funnels right through on this boat called Blue Gold. And we just started going down, 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 down this wave. And I looked at like Ty's, who was my like chief stew. And I looked at him and we look at each other and we're like, holy shit. And we just were like and we submarined this 162 foot staysail schooner plowed it right into the, into the center of the wave completely underwater. And then we did it two more times. And then what does that feel? Right I up. mean, like you were just describing about going down, down, because you know, you see videos on like Instagram and stuff about these big waves and these ships are like on it. Yeah. I mean, what does that feel like? Is it, it does it feel like you're dropping or is it just kind of, cause you're on water. It's like, it, it's, <laughs> it's like, no, it's like, going down a giant hill, but then the other hill, the hill is going to come and fall on you is like, that's what it looks like. Now that segued. So we hit that three sets of three sets of waves. So it was like really big seas. We came up the other side. Now there was a, um, there was, 
up in the forward bilge. This was scary afterwards. I was like, this is where I almost got killed. Um, so there was this bilge alarm that was like, I had to go down a hatch. There's a bilge alarm that was down a hatch underneath the, um, the chain locker. And occasionally it would get stuck on. You just had to go and, and rattle it. Well, um, it got, when we hit those waves, it actually, the bilge alarm got stuck on and I went, ah, shoot, I, I should go fix that. So, um, Francis, the second engineer goes up and he's holding this big hatch up forward and he's looking at me and I go, I climb down the ladder. And I remember I just had this, I bought this brand new jacket from Gill. It said blue gold on it. So I folded it nice, neatly. And I put it on this sail because we stored a bunch of spare sails there. And then I had to pull the deck, the, 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 this um, piece of diamond plate hatch off. And then I look down and there's about like, eh, like a foot of water in there. So I jump down in there. So now I'm at the bowels of the ship and then I have to crawl and I'm underneath the, um, I'm underneath the anchor locker and I feel the boat starting to go down again. And I'm like, oh shit. And I knew the hatch was open. So we got hit by this other wave. And then as soon as I was I, like that whole compartment filled with water and I was completely underwater. So I'm starting to back out, back yes. out, because I'm I'm underneath this this anchor hatch, and I'm I'm backing out, backing out, and I'm, it's kind of dark, and I can't see anything, and and I feel the the uh, I feel the um, the stringers for this other hatch, and I I get my hands on it. We get hit by another wave, which filled the compartment up further, and I I get my head popped out, and my jacket wraps around my head, and I'm like, oh my god. So I like peeling this freaking jacket off and I feel the boat going down for a third time. At this point, I'm out of air. And Francis, the first wave had knocked him all the way back to the stern of boat. He runs and he slams the hatch shut. And I was able to get my head above water that was inside this compartment, which we then had to pump out because it was completely flooded. And then I was able to get out. And afterwards, I was just like, I can't, I was thinking to myself, I can't believe I just trashed my brand new jacket. And then I got back to the pilot. I was I'm like, holy shit, I almost died on that one. But yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was uh that was uh, some hairy moments and scary Jeez. moments. That was scary I mean moment. it's not all it's not just all, you know, perfect and luxurious and opulent, is it? No. <sighs> That's crazy. All right, so we have a, another another question. By the way, guys, Adrian Gang will be joining us on Tuesday. I'm so excited because she's so knowledgeable, just like Captain Sean in a whole different realm. I'm so excited to talk to her, but she has a really good question. This is actually really interesting. What is the most glaring aspect of real life yachting that you think the show misses and underplays? There's way more sex in real yachting. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, pay we're playing to our crowd tonight. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is definitely the crowd to tell that. To. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, I think we have another question too. Where is this? Where can I find a stern thruster? Ah. Well, yeah. Like, the gang's all here tonight, guys. We have 115 in the room. Go ahead and hit that like button if you're watching this. It helps us out. <laughs> I've got such a great comment. I'm not going there. Nope. Not as, as, a, nope. As, a, as a follow up, someone else asked Kaya, Kaya Diaz, does the stern thruster have a tip? You guys are out of control tonight. It all. <laughs> all right. Carolyn asks. Uh, what is your favorite place throughout the world to yacht? And I, I think mm. we right. talked a little bit about yeah. this, but I just always assume it's like the Caribbean or the Mediterranean and you forget, like just after watching, let me bring up this guys. If you haven't checked it out, I'm going to link it below. Um, or maybe I didn't even get a photo of it. Uh, just one second, guys. I want to bring this up because it is so interesting and pertinent to this question. Um <laughs> <laughs> good, question, good comment from coffee buzz sure <laughs> the highest latitude which uh captain sean was involved in it's a really great documentary uh you can watch it on youtube for free it's amazing uh but you actually took this yacht up to the arctic and I, i'm gonna let you explain this but do you prefer these kind of waters and and also what is your favorite place throughout the world to yacht yeah, I've got to say that the the Northwest, the Northwest Passage was probably that was the most challenging thing I've I've ever done, and we did it twice. Uh, Svalbard is spectacular. It's it's uh, it, there's a lot of great elements up there. It's actually a little bit more accessible, a lot more accessible than Northwest Passage. 
Um, so I, I've, I got to say the Arctic. I've never been to Antarctica. A good friend of mine, Lisa, just got back from Antarctica. She's an amazing photographer, a naturalist and captain. Um, check out Lisa LaPointe on Instagram if you want to see some really, really good photos. I look at I look at her stuff and I think <laughs> I think to myself, boy, I need help in photography. Um, anyway, so that would be that. Uh, Thailand spectacular. Uh, South Pacific, Vanuatu is um, a personal favorite. New Zealand's wonderful as well, too. The Caribbean, I mean, there's good things. Again, like I said in, in last time, I said I like the people in the Caribbean. Um, uh, the Med, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a member of the Monaco Yacht Club. They uh, uh, made me a member there. And I, I you know, great, great organization, great club. Oh, look at, look at Jason's hat there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> I'm now a member of the Monaco Yacht Club. So I like, I mean, I like, I like a lot. I, I, I like, it's, it, Europe just is, the scenery is, is beautiful, but the, uh, the ports are great and everything. Um, I got um, I, guess, I guess I like, I like the wilder places. I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Is the, Well, is I guess the, also the, in the Mediterranean, you kind of like every port and, every place is so different and unique. I mean, I, I wouldn't assume like Portugal or the Azores or Spain is anywhere like, like Greece or Turkey. There's well, just so no, many, Croatia even. There, there, it, it's all got a similar, different cultures, but the marinas are set up similar. The, the water, the, it, you know, you're in the med when you're in the med. Got it. You do. It, it, and there's a ton of subtle differences that you, you can have, but just it's the, this is what really, what resonates. We've talked about this before. It's the lighting um, in different places. The lighting in the Arctic is amazing, but the lighting in, in, in the Met is amazing too. And, and it's why you, if you look at a piece of art or whatever of, of guys that lived in the Med in the South of France or especially Florence, the lighting is very special there landlocked but but beautiful um and that's really what i i think of the most of when i think of favorite places to be is like is the lighting new zealand's got like a silver light to it so but the arctic the lighting up there is special it's like you can't take a bad photo yeah i mean and these these are are so amazing this documentary was amazing and josh sorry go ahead i think you wanted to say something no no i was i was actually just gonna uh this this question's really interesting ggb said um Sorry if you've answered this before, but what what path led you to where you are in this career? And this is this she added on a second one, which I actually think is really interesting. Do you have family in the field? Did you grow up with family in the yes. yacht? Okay. Yeah, it was a lot of my family worked on worked on boats. I've got two uncles that are captains, Michael David, Michael Terry, both very instrumental in uh, in me getting a license. The uh, they all both work for Highline Cruises. Uh, my, uh, my stepfather, uh, encouraged me to get in, into yachting and he's in, uh, like a award-winning avid sailor. Yeah. A lot of sailors, a lot of sailors in my, in my family. And, um, <laughs> what path led you to where you are today in this career? A long and winding road. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long, long, long discussion. Um, uh, uh, and I think that's true of, true of anybody really. It's just, uh, you know, what led kind of Jason and Josh and I together is a, this confluence of events, um, uh, that are just, you know, we were talking about that today. It's like, how the hell did this happen? But anyway. yeah, how did we, what are, yeah. What are we working so, on? What is I mean, that? it would be like, I, I like people ask me like, why were you in the boats? And I said, well, if I grew up in Montana, I'd be in, I'd be riding horses, you know? So, uh, yeah. yeah. I'd be a cowboy, not a captain. Um, and I think that was just the geography of where I live. Uh, people that were in my family that chose that career and the opportunity <coughs> to drive big boats at a young age uh, led me to where I am today. That's awesome. That That's really cool. Um, so it had nothing to do with... No, I'm just kidding. Start at the tip. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, Sam, so I don't know... I don't right. know if you before you before you read that. I don't know if you called it out, Jason, but Jason did drop the link, guys, in the chat. It's pinned to the top. Yes. If it's you like want to call in and ask questions, 
instead of having us butcher your questions, uh, call in. We, we we have a great fun group, and uh, they're a little filthy, but <laughs> <laughs> they're a little dirty. I'm sure, but I'm sure not. Dr. Sean will be fine. Uh, Cy- <laughs> Cyrus, I'll, I'll answer Joe's, but Cyrus Black had a good question. He says, you've had a pretty eclectic nautical career. What was your favorite vessel among all the boats you've captained? Oh, uh, wow. Well, that's kind of like saying, what's your favorite child? Um, and then I've learned yeah. a lot. I've learned a lot from them all. Um, probably the boat that has a very special place in my heart is, uh, is a, well, that's tough. I got picked, I get paintings of some boats that I ran up there and they're like, I'm like, don't want to talk bad about the, you know, they might yeah, be yeah, they're right there. Um, the listening. patience and the prudence <laughs> to, to sightseeing boats. That's really where I cut my teeth, where I really learned how to drive boats. Um, the cross rip was a, uh, one of the Highline ferry boats that, uh, I drove between Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. And it was like, I, I first started driving that boat. I came back from Europe. I was, um, this is a story. It was one of the only boat jobs. The only time I ever ran as first mate. And the only time I ever got fired from a, from a job, uh, a boat job, um, where anyway, well, <laughs> I've been fired from other jobs too, but not for not for performance anyway um the uh but the cross trip i got back on this boat my mojo was at an all-time low and uh it was i for the first time i questioned myself i was like actually literally like scared driving the boat i was afraid i was going to make mistakes and that was not like me uh the uh, i had for lack of a theatrical terms like really bad stage fright and every time i stepped up there i questioned every decision that i was making and then one time Coming into Nantucket, the uh, um, it was this. There was like rocks on one side, yachts on the other side, and this very narrow slip. I had to put it in, and the wind was howling, and I was kind of coming in at a, a bad angle. And the port engine, the starter seized, and the port engine exploded. So this is about you know 110 foot ferry that with, and I've got 400 passengers on it, and we're coming in for a crash landing and there was this and this all of a sudden this calm came over me and my all my instincts everything like literally pushed all the fear aside and said step aside i'll take over now and i went into like freaking hyper mode put the boat on the dock perfectly and people knew what was happening because they saw black smoke and shit coming out of the side of the boat and i took it out of this dive and i put it on the dock and afterwards and i thought as it was all in my head and so and i'll ever thank the cross rep for getting my like giving me my mojo back and um that that's why that boat would be special to me um yacht wise blue gold and latitude probably my two favorites uh, blue gold was one of those boats that um i've never pushed a boat as hard as i've ever pushed that boat i mean it was a sailboat we blew out sails I mean, punched it through three 30 foot waves, just kept coming back from more boat was an absolute tank. Uh, great, great boat. Well, spent three really great years. Wonderful family owned that vessel. I'd still do some work for them. Um, fantastic boat. And of course, latitude, cause latitude, it was, uh, it, it was latitude was a, 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 is a good boat in a lot of ways. It's, it's a great boat in a lot of ways, but what was special about that vessel was the owner Anil Fadani, who um, who really let me off my leash, believed in me, believed I could pull off the Northwest Passage, and also to the crew that I had on board that boat was was were just were were all special, wonderful, wonderful people. Um, I could not have gone as far and done what I've done with uh, without um, you know Sheldon Haley, Cliff, Rob, Franco, James, Ashley, Cindy. Steve, uh, you know, James, uh, uh, Kurt, you know, the, uh, the, the, everybody on board that boat was, uh, and Marcus, like our German Terminator chef, they're all great. Was what made that boat great was the people that were on board, on board it. And, uh, and uh in my crew they're a special crew. Blue gold was a special crew as well. Too. But I mean, I guess shoot, the, all the my crews are special. On the latitude, you know, you guys were what the 162nd vessel to ever do the Northwest Passage, right? Yeah, the and first then- time we did it, we were 162. Then we did it again, um, the uh, the other way, and that's this time we were the third private boat in history ever to do that, and the ninth boat of any boat ever to do that. And there has wow. only been 19 attempts in history. 
And I guess you have to have a great crew if you're going to spend that much time together, because how long does that take? Well, the first trip that we did, we were 126 days um, from Boston all the way to Vancouver. And then, uh, and then I think we were 176 days from, um, from uh, Nome, Alaska, all the way to London. Wow. That's incredible. Well, I, I could imagine some, I mean, uh, some of the stuff you saw too is just, I'm sure, I'm I sure had, everything was a photo, you know, opportunity. Yeah. So Joe Mendoza asks, outside drugs and illegal activities, what requests from charter guests are a no-go? <laughs> Do you have to fulfill most requests or, or can one actually respectfully tell them to kiss one's cooter? <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, that's a well-written. That's a well-written question. Um, yeah. Joe. I, I appreciate your uh, literary acumen. Anyway, um, so uh, oh, absolutely. Um, you can tell them. To, you can tell them respectfully. I like to use Irish diplomacy, and Irish diplomacy is the ability to tell a man to go to hell so that he looks forward to the trip, and. The, <laughs> Um, there's also the old bait and switch, just like, look over here, shiny rabbit. Look, um, <laughs> mostly those, the, the, I think the type of requests that we get are like, uh, when I have to make a weather call, um, th th I used to be, yeah. we had one charter like on my Sienna, um, they, I'm getting in a little NDA territory here, but let's just say. <laughs> I got a, I got a request to leave the dock. Um, and, uh, I said, no, <laughs> <laughs> the weather situation was, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. Um, I had another situation too, where we're going down to, yeah, I say the weather if, aside from all the weather's the, the key thing is like, no, it's, it's too rough to go out or too nasty. I'd one, and to put this in perspective, was coming down the east coast of Florida, and we had a trip we had to do on my Sienna. This is for my Sienna again. We had a trip we had to do for the boss, and I called the the boat manager. I said, "I'm pulling into Norfolk," and he goes, "What do you mean? You got to be in Florida?" And I said, "No, I'm pulling into Norfolk." And he goes, well, "What's wrong?" And I said, "There's a giant storm coming. It is. Uh, um, they're predicting it's going to be really bad. Well, is it really bad?" And they're asking, they're questioning me on that. I go. Yeah, it's really bad. He goes, can you go around it? And I said, I'm not going around it. I'm pulling into Norfolk. That's it. End of story. Anyway, long story short, that turned out to be Hurricane Sandy. And oh, wow. Yeah. And so you got to really, once you make a decision like that, you just got to stick to your guns. Um, all the other requests too. I mean, we really, I really try to, no matter how wacky, one of my all-time favorite clients, and I can call him out, Roger Stein, wonderful guy, wonderful family. Uh, I'd have Roger on like he is a, he's today. He's still a friend. Um, great guy. And Roger used to mess with me. Um, he'd send me a text and be like, be like, uh, I'd like a piano on board tonight. And, you know, and I'd be like, we'd be like the Caribbean. I go, Oh, and I just type back. I go, okay. And then, uh, for like 45 minutes later, I'd be like, okay, found piano. Um, what time do you want it? And he'd be like, how much? And I'd be like, this is an actual price. I go, I would say 25,000. He'd be like, and I'd get like the what? And I'd break it down for him. I'm like, we need a truck. We need a crane. We need a piano tuner. Then we need a crane, a truck, and another piano tuner. <laughs> and it would be like, no. <laughs> but I mean, he would ask, you know what I mean? I'd just be like, I never said no. I never said yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, we have like, you know, you're like, can you guys get Beyonce on? I'm like, sure. We can try. I think, and, I, and I've meant this, and I mean this. If you want the London Symphony Orchestra to come and parachute onto a desert island and play for you, I'll make it happen if you're willing to stroke the check for that because there is a number <laughs> that will make that happen. So any request that doesn't involve safety, <laughs> fuck it. Why not? Yeah, we'll make it happen. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want me to put a bra and panties and serve you sushi, there's a number that will make that happen. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> And what is that number? It's a big number. Can we write a check right now? 
Josh, I'll put in twenty bucks if you put in twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so, we're, we're uh, guys. There's a link for the Kickstarter coming up tomorrow. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll and this, we need we need a lot more. We need a lot more subscribers to make that happen. <laughs> I mean, um, this is a good this is a good one because I think everybody who watches the show wants to know this. Give us a ballpark on this, Captain Sean. Joe Joe's been hot on the question tonight. He wrote, "Let's pretend I have money. How much money should I have, including tip, to go enjoy my Sienna for two or three day charter in real life?" What, oh, what that is, is a take? great question because we yeah I think everybody who watches the show wants to know. You know. Uh, let me just whip out my calculator. <laughs> it's his calculator, folks. Don't get too excited. Four days? He said two or three days. Two days? I'll do three days. Give, yeah, give it to you. It's nice. We'll cut it down the middle there. 150 grand. Wow. And that's including tip. That's including tip, yeah. A small house in most states or... Three days on my Sienna. But that's not like, I mean, and that's like if you're drinking, you know, average booze. If you're drinking, yeah. if you're drinking bottles of Class Azul at 500 bucks a bottle, um, that's tequila. Uh, and I mean, shit, you can blow that. I had, a, I had another great client. He's a wonderful guy. I've had to, he said, I was buying a boat. He's putting together a budget for me. I said, put together a budget for me. I said, sure. And he's like, Oh my God, this boat's going to cost me, you know, this boat's going to cost me that much. <laughs> and I said, yeah, he goes, how? And I said, I said, I'm not going to say his name. I said, I said, uh, you told me that on your last trip, you drank $30,000 worth of booze. And he's like, yeah. He says, you told me that you're going to want to use your boat 10 weeks of the year. <laughs> said, yeah. I go right there. That's $300,000. Just an alcohol. He's like, oh, I got to drink it. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Or drink cheaper stuff. You know, it's, it's like, yeah. Um, I'm trying to look. Sorry, I'm so behind in the chat, guys, because I'm trying to find your questions and everything. Josh, if you see any. Yeah. Um, with two... uh, coffee buzz, ever so classy, wants no boxers or briefs. <laughs> and Josh, we all got to know. Commando. Tonight. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's how I do the show every week. Kind I'm of like, no, I, I like honestly, <laughs> like I go commando. I'm, I'm embarrassed to be here right now, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a safety right. thing, right? It, it's a safety thing. Well, right, you gotta I'm... be careful of the zipper. <laughs> that's the only. Yeah, you, know, you gotta be. I've learned that the hard way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you become, you become one with your pants. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, okay. This is a great question too, Joe. You're like seriously on it today. Um, oh, by the way, Bridget, I do have to say, yes, 100%. <laughs> you know, that's just from a different perspective. But uh, Joe says, are captains the only ones with four striped um, epaulets? Epaulets. 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 I'm going to get a prop. Ooh, props. Like a good prop. <laughs> like a good tip. Like a good prop. <laughs> some some of you guys, like in the live chat, you guys really, it was all about the tip tonight. So thank you guys for being here. There we go. Okay. So um, on board the boat, the, you have officers that will have four stripes. Me. And then um, sometimes you'll have a chief stew with with four, but the, uh, and, and a chief engineer, but the, the, the symbol, instead of an anchor, will be it's a propeller for an engineer and a chief stew sometimes will have like a crescent moon yeah and that's that's really so that's the but the only one that's got four stripes with an anchor will be the will be the captain on board and how would um how would a a chief stew get four stripes how does that it's like what uniform supplier we go to and if she orders himself a set of epaulets with four stripes <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not the fucking Navy. I mean, it's like we can mix shit up. I mean, we can put like, you know, four. You guys heard it here. We're not the four Navy. Four fucking sparrows on your shoulder. You know, and it's just like the, uh, you know, so it's like, it's it's all, it's, it's like, yeah. I mean, there is like merchant marine stuff. 
Uh, but like on the yachts, yeah, no, we make it up. That's funny. Um, listen, uh, I hold, I have another question for you. Uh, yeah, Norm is right. No, saw... Stewards should have martini glasses. <laughs> um, let me see. Sorry, I just I had a question when you were talking about that. And now I've lost it. Um, anyways, while I think and I find another question, let's bring up one of our callers. I'll take it by whoever called in first. Um, we have Tess. Tess is with us, so I'm going to bring her up. Uh, really yes. Quick. Hope you're ready. I'm ready. I am Hi, so Tess. ready. Hi. Hashtag Team Sean. Okay. Hey, Tess. <laughs> I know, right? I'm very nervous, but hey, how's it going? I'm good. Thank you. Don't be nervous, Tess. I saw your picture on Twitter with your uh, with your red your crazy red hair and glasses. Oh, yeah. That's my <laughs> artist. That's like if you ever want to know how sane I am, there you are. There you go. But um, <laughs> man, this is. You know, some people sail the Arctic and like the girl go for me. all these places. I click on YouTube links and that's my adventure. <laughs> like this takes a lot for me. I'm very nervous. But uh, I guess my question was, I think it's so fascinating, um, like the lifestyle and the yachting and the boating and just all the like that, the highest the, slide, that was beautiful, by the way. I was so artistically inspired by that. And all that stuff looks amazing to me. And I would love to do that. But I have so many like hurdles. And I was just wondering, like... um. Somebody that gets into the business, someone who, say, has, like, severe motion sickness or claustrophobia, like, have you ever seen someone with severe reservations kind of overcome that and kind of, like, get oh, over absolutely. themselves? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's yeah. that's an excellent question. So um, uh, claustrophobia, uh, the, these types of vessels, that you're not going to be claustrophobic. There's no um, – um, it, it's not like being – like in a, in a submarine or, or something, there's a lot of open space on there. So uh, maybe, yeah, I've never really had, I've had people that would freak out with, with, with small spaces. Um, the uh, motion sickness is uh, a lot of the boats are really well stabilized. So you, it's not a, it's not a jarring feeling. Uh, a lot of the modern tenders, even the smaller stuff, we just delivered uh, delivered a 39 foot Everglades that had uh, what's called a sea keeper in it. It's like basically it's a gyroscope which keeps the the boat steady, and two trim tabs which are called zip wakes. So the boat's incredibly stable, um, and so you don't get that you don't get that type of motion. Uh, the yeah, technology's come a long way where the boats the platforms that you're on are are, are, are very stable. There are other boats that don't have all of that. And you might, if you're prone to motion sickness, you might get it. The, I found really that, um, the best is like distract, like, like I've never been, the only time I've ever been seasick or, and I've never been seasick. The only time I've gotten queasy is if I'm a passenger. And so if I'm mentally engaged in something like, and I've also noticed this too, I've had whole crews that have been down. It's been brutally rough and everybody is just down with uh, yeah. with seasickness and then that general alarm will go off and they'll snap out of it immediately and they're they're perfectly okay so it's the the key to not being seasick on board a boat is to stay mentally engaged so if you came on board which i would always have you on board Tess. if you came on board <laughs> i don't oh, know about that, <laughs> you say I, that put, I put you in the pilot house I put you in the pilot house, and if you're an artist and you want to and draw, I say I just like look, draw me a picture of what's happening out here, and and I oh guarantee you, you'd snap out of it because you'd be like, oh okay, because you're also re you're also reverting back to something that you're competently good at and that you can concentrate on, um, and that you know you can do. And if you if you apply that while you're on board a boat, you 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 won't get seasick. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's a really cool idea. Like that actually helps me a lot in my life. Like a lot of times when I start to freak out about stuff i go to my art so i wonder yeah. if that would really it, it, help. exactly yeah. it, and i think that's a good advice it's like it's like you're you're i've seen your art and you're and you're excellent oh, um thank you. no I mean, I mean i mean that sincerely the uh and the it, and you yeah it, you're extremely competent in that and that and just remember in the rest of your life have let that let that bleed through because you're 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 a phenomenal artist and if you have other phobias or fears just always always remind yourself of that okay thank you so much i really that's appreciate awesome. it, it Tess, was amazing thank you so much for, thank you yeah, for calling I, in we <laughs> are for amazing. Calling in. and i gotta say from like the first episode it it was tess and i 
were team Sean <laughs> from the beginning. So I'm and so you glad were. you called it Tess. <laughs> true. Yeah. I'm so glad you called it Tess. Like you've been Hell my yeah. buddy on this since the beginning. So hey. thank you. I'm so glad I'm, you called I'm it. I'm sad they renamed the boat because I used to my thing used to be you can't spell my Sienna without Sean. <laughs> that was like my, yeah. my <laughs> team Sean tagline. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. Y'all That's are amazing. amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much. Jason, Seth. tell Adam I think he's awesome too. Bye, guys. Oh, I will. <laughs> he's probably asleep. Yeah, I think oh, he was well. in here earlier. <laughs> Good night, Tess. We Good appreciate night. you. Thank you. Bye. And Dub, thank you so much for the super sticker. We appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. Um, uh, Andrea had a really good question. Have you dealt with pirates? Because I think sometimes people don't realize that is kind of still a thing right if i'm not mistaken and it's not the pirates who are like oi or whatever they say <laughs> well right behind you jason you have my anti you have one of my anti-pirate tools other which side. one uh either one works but you go go i'd go with the other one this one yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would love, I would love if true, if you honestly walk the deck with that on your belt. That would be I, freaking amazing. I, I have. Oh my god! I, I think that would we be totally. We totally have pirate night on board. On board, yeah. Oh no, but I mean, if you were just in your normal uniform, oh, wait a and minute. I was how, arriving... how, how we dealt with pirates, not how we dress up as pirates. I get the question wrong. No, oh, um, well, you know. <laughs> No, the best way the best way to, to deal with um, to deal with pirates is uh, like I've had people that have been pirated, but it's really very your routine. I get a lot of um, owners on board. They'll be like, "Oh, should we get guns?" and and I say say to them, "No, that's not a, that's unless you're willing to train the crew on how to use them. All you're going to do is put people in jeopardy." Uh, I've been fortunate. I've trained with, um, if you guys, again, if you want to look at a really interesting website and a great group of guys, go to Solutions Group International. Um, uh, or uh, you want to see a real badass instructor, go to Lioness Tactical on um, on Instagram. She's, she's uh, she'll kill you. Um, but no, she's super cute. And her <laughs> she and her husband are, are really, uh, uh, I met them on a uh, executive protection course for Solutions Group International. But anyway, um, that's an extreme example. And, and that's, you never want to put yourself in a situation where you're going to need those skills. So the best way is vary your routine. Don't be a mark. Uh, don't stay in a particular anchorage for more than a couple of days. If you're in an area that has theft or piracy and don't, um, um, don't create a pattern, which somebody can, can look to, uh, to come on board. Like if I, like my guys that are on night watch on the deck, I'm like, don't walk the decks every 20 minutes, do it every five, then do it every 10. Um, take the spotlight, just shine it around the boat on the beach, wherever. It, it, and that way they just, we, we look like we're aware and most criminals are opportunist and they're going to try to take you if you're unaware and they think you're an easy mark. And if they don't think that they're not going to come after you in a nutshell, that's the best way to avoid piracy. I mean, it kind of reminds me of like, they literally for loss prevention and retail, they'll literally, that's why someone's there. That's oftentimes they say hello, right. When you walk in. So yeah. it's like, you're aware, they're aware you're there. And um, yeah, like it, it's those simple things. And yeah, cause really, I, I think, uh, you know, criminals are lazy and they're opportunists. So if I have a couple yachts to pick from, and that one's got all this action going. Uh, it's unpredictable and stuff. But that one, if every day I see them go get take a tender to dinner at six o'clock, hmm, probably go over there where they leave every day at the same time. And I know that okay, I could probably get on there without you know much hassle and stuff. Then I'll probably just take the easy path, you know, least path of least resistance. Yeah. Um, let's see. I know we have some other people who called in. Jason is having fix, trouble. I'm trying to fix my camera really quick. Sorry. <laughs> Jason, um, bring in one of our, bring in another caller if we have someone waiting. Yeah. Yes. And I will be right back. So I'm going to okay. bring up Mocha. Mocha is in the room. Coffee Buzz, thank you so much for the super sticker. We appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you guys all being here tonight. This is a fun conversation. So if you still have more questions, go ahead and post them in the live chat. And yeah, we'll be right back. Uh, Mocha, I'm going to bring you up right now. 
Both of our favorite Aussies. Yes. <laughs> um, so firstly, I just want to say, Captain Sean, like the information you give is incredible. Like you're so knowledgeable and it's amazing to learn from you. So thank you for that. Um, my question is like, it's probably random, but have you or will you like ever build your own boat? Yeah, that's not, that's not a random question. That's the, uh, um, um, work. Matter of fact, uh, yeah, I've never done a complete rebuild or, or new build, um, ground up, but I've, um, I'm involved in a couple of projects. The, uh, um, the, one's called project zero. You guys can, should look it up. It's the largest fossil fuel free sail yacht in the world. I've been helping design the interface for that. Um, uh, I've designed a couple of concept. I'm not a naval architect, but I've got good. I kind of know what I want in a yacht and a yacht and other guys that I I've worked with and they're my favorite repack, uh, out of there, a, a Dutch a naval architecture firm, very, very smart naval architects. Um, the, uh, doing a, possibly doing a conversion on what's an offshore supply vessel and turning that into, into a yacht. So anyway, so yeah, so the answer to your question is no, I haven't, but I'm ready to do one. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. What else? How's well, that was mostly my main question. Cause I'm oh, like, sorry. I'm yeah, I'm okay. And I didn't hear, it. so I wasn't <laughs> Sorry like I'm about. always curious about like if you if you live on the water and like this is your passion and what you do in life like do you ever on like your wind down time ever think about making your own personal boat like suited to you so that was I know. yeah yeah the uh, I, I can't afford it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'd imagine when you've been uh, working for billionaires on super yachts. <laughs> Your tastes are probably a little. Uh, uh, oh, I know, oh, I know what I would build for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure. The, you uh, say. And it, you know, probably there's a uh, the if I could buy one off the rack, uh, uh, Moki M O K I. It's an Italian lobster boat. I, mean, I just think they're they're beautiful lines. The interiors are great. The the Moki, eighty foot, I think would be that would be a fun boat to own just to just to bang around in. Um, Sailboat, I would probably, I'd pick a moth, which is a uh, foiling, um, just madman death trap. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway. Hey, Captain John, look at Joe's latest question. That's good, oh, Joe. Lord. Lord. All right, uh, Mocha, thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you, Have a good we one. love hearing from you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I think Joe needs to call in. He's been asking. Yeah, all Joe these needs questions. to call in because then so, he can just ask him all at once. But uh, I just want to say thank you so much for the super sticker hack thirteen thirty. We appreciate you. Thanks thank for joining you. us in this conversation. Okay, so what question are we going to next? Um, well, uh, <laughs> Captain Sean, if you want to answer this, have have you had crew relationships <laughs> during your yachting career? Any stories to share? Which place in the yacht do you wish you would have done it? Lol. <laughs> I was going to sit back and let you handle this one for a little bit. <laughs> well, listen, I, we have another one. Well, <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyway, um, well, let's just say. Anyway, uh, the, 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 I, um, I have. The, have I had crew relationships over my, over the years? Yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> um, the, um, which place in the yacht do you wish you have done it? I pretty much did it in all the places. So. <laughs> I was going to ask if there was any place you had. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I don't know what maybe it you're referring to, but uh, you know, I've, uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, okay, I'll pay, I'll pay to ask first Captain Sean to take some tea on both boat ramps. Has Cap ever did? Go, oh, goddamn. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> Norma, thank you so much for the super chat. <laughs> um, the uh, second, share some tea on boat romance. And has Captain ever dated a guest or crew? Yes, I'm so shallow. Um, I checked out your IMBD profile. 
Norma. You're a lot of things, but shallow is not one of them. Anyway, uh, and good luck on your next project. Uh, the uh, um, yeah, I've had some. I've had some boat romances. I've had some boat romances. The uh, um, yes, yes, I have. <laughs> I, and, <laughs> oh, this is an interesting one. What? This is from Andrea. Have you ever buried anyone at sea? Yeah, several people. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Did not expect that coming hard and fast like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is this is this like a uh, sprinkled ash kind of thing? Or is no, this it's a... pissed me off. Anyway, oh, um, <laughs> no, it's, yeah. no, I've done a I've done actually several burials at sea. Um uh, the <laughs> You just well, gotta make sure the wind's blowing in the right direction. Oh jeez! Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> um, there, I have a. Let's take. We, I have another caller. Donna's in the room. Oh, okay. So I want to bring up Donna. Donna. I know she um, wasn't sure if she wanted to call in. I'm really glad you did, guys. If you want to call yes. in, we're running on an almost an hour and fifteen minutes, so I don't want to keep Captain Sean all night. But um, go ahead and call in or leave a question, and I'll try to see if I can find any other ones. Buried uh, yourself in them, or anyway, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Donna. Hi. Donna. Hi, Donna. I, I am so fanning out. Like, Captain Sean, I loved you from day one. I, I, I don't even know if I have a question. I'm just like, okay, third, third drink. But I was going to bed, and this group always makes my night, but you are amazing. Um... I, I gotta have a question. Um, how many languages do you speak, and do you take an interpreter with you when you go to different countries? That's a great question. Oh, the, uh, I love question. oh I love you more now. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, that's a really great question. The uh, uh, I was just just in when I was in Central America with uh, doing the plastic cleanup that I was doing down there uh, in October and November. Uh, on board, we had. Uh, our, our chef, she was French, and she spoke. Um, she was fluent in French, English, and Spanish, and incredibly handy to have on board. The, uh, the so, hundred percent, yeah. Having someone that speaks a language is critical to to wherever we go. Uh, I speak English. <laughs> uh, and, That's uh, all you need. That's speak, all you need. <laughs> well, no, I speak well. Yes and no. It's just uh, I want, English. I think is the language of business. Um, it's also the language that is used on VHF radios. You have to know how to speak English. It's like all pilots have to know. Uh, airline pilots have to know English. Um, oh, okay. The uh, I speak. I, I, my French was used to be better. I used to speak Nick Noi Thai, which means a little bit of Thai. Uh, <laughs> my Italian is highly specialized. Uh, it says shipyard Italian. Diluente means paint thinner. Volte is a bolt. Volte metre is a metric bolt. And um, <laughs> Ani means tomorrow, which is whenever I ask for something in an Italian shipyard, that's what they tell me when it's going to be done. Domani. Um, like in Jamaica, soon come. I get it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, Russian uh, divai means hurry up. And yeah, yeah divai, divai. Divai, divai. So yeah, just uh, so that's about it. <laughs> I, I'm a that. little up there in age, and I cannot believe I'm like fanning out. Like you're my Sean Connery of, and he's like the ultimate for me. You're my Sean Connery of boats. Like, I love you. Thank you, everyone who encouraged me to call in. I'm gonna keep drinking because I am still fanning out. Oh, love you, Donna, Donna. Josh. thank you very much. Um, thank Josh, you were you, Josh, were you gonna show him the Anchor Watch Commando? No, that's uh, that's oh, that's just okay. for you guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that anchor's that anchor's. I just wanted later. to show. Well, maybe you can tell Captain Sean later, and on the next visit, he can show us his <laughs> commando axe swinging tip. You guys have a great night, and I, 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 I don't want to apologize of how naughty this naughty chat no, has been tonight. No, this has no, made. Naughty I was going to bed, and I saw Captain Sean like poor, poor martini, like. You're amazing. You. I love you. You've made Cleveland so much warmer, and we're in frigid temperatures right now. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Hope you come again. You. I'll talk to bye. you guys later. I'm like freaking out. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>
Donna, you did not disappoint. Thank you for calling. Uh, that was awesome. Everyone's loving it too. Look at the chat room. They're loving it. Donna killed it. Um, well, there thank was you, a N-Dub. question in here. I'm trying to look. I saw oh, one yes, back there. Joe. Joe, yes, yes he, uh, he actually too did an interview with Adam. Um, and we always see him when we're out and about in West Palm too. Because there's like, there's, where are the, uh, where are the major like kind of ports of yachts, like all well, over the world? Uh, like the, the big... I mean, the two the two big ones, Fort Lauderdale and Monaco. I mean, just wow. in a nutshell, yeah. The uh, or you get Antibes, uh, south of France, Antibes, um, uh, eh, Nice, but Antibes, Antibes, and Monaco are the two are the two big shows, and Ca- well, Cannes too, but yeah. And then in Italy, wow. you've got I mean, some. You've got some, I mean, that whole, the Riviera is pretty much where the action is. I found Cyrus what? Black's one. This will be fun. Uh-oh. You can tell a lot of, you can tell a lot about someone by their taste in fictional heroes. Who is your favorite? Bond, Batman, or Doctor Who? Oh. Oh. Hmm. Do you want to take a guess? Should we let the live chat take a guess? Yeah, take a yeah, guess. Yeah, exactly. You tell me. Okay. Bond, Batman, or Doctor Who? Bond, and that's who Batman, your favorite would be, right? Yeah. Who 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 is Captain Sean gonna say is his favorite? <clears throat> and we know we're like on a little delay, so we have to wait. Okay, now we're starting to see some. So Doctor Who, Doctor Who, Bond, or Batman, guys. Interesting. Another Doctor Who. I'm telling you guys, I wouldn't have gone Doctor Who. That's just me personally, but I don't know Doctor Who very well. Well, if it's Tom Baker, Doctor Who. I'm seeing one James Bond. I'm seeing a lot of Doctor Who's. Yeah, someone said which Doctor. That's a good point. Another Bond. Yeah, it would be, it would be, it'd be, yeah, it would be uh, I mean, it was like, I, I grew up without a, I grew up without a father. Um, so I kind of had to pick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cyrus Black. Um, but no, no, no. I was gonna say I grew up. I grew up without a father, but I grew up on on the Bond films and on and on Star Trek. So I had to. So I decided I was gonna pick my own fathers, and I picked James Bond and Captain Kirk. And both my fathers, very good. Both my stepfathers would be very proud of me at this point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I it, that's it's crazy because um, I love Bond and. I, I love Star Trek, especially like newer ones, but would Kirk be your favorite captain? Oh, absolutely. I, someone did ask that earlier in the chat that I saw. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. All right. All right. I'll take, let's do one more question and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up, I guess, because we're running on an hour and 20 minutes. And I know we appreciate you just being here, but I want to take all your night. Um, but Andrea, what do you think of the movie? Jaws. I well, love what do you Jaws. think of the captain? But what do you think of the captain in the movie? Jaws? Oh, the yeah, captain. I don't think Sorry, he was captain. a great captain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although I guess he I think Quint, the job done. I think Quint was, uh, yeah, guys, yeah, he was, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, Captain Sean, thank you so much for joining us again. We appreciate it. And then if you haven't done so already, this is free on YouTube, guys. It's the highest latitude. It is a great, great uh, film documentary about uh, Captain Sean and his crew and the owner of the latitude um, going through the Northwest Passage. And it just has amazing, amazing footage to see. Oh, yeah. Um, And my, uh, my tip on this, guys, uh, I said this last time, but if you have like an Apple TV or something, skip watching it on the computer. You want to see it on as big a screen as possible that you can watch it on. The The visuals are stunning. Like it, you're really doing yourself a disservice um, if you're not watching it on as big a screen as possible. Um, Captain Sean and his crew pulled off some, I mean, some wild shots. Like it's stunning. So definitely check yeah. it out. It, it's free. It's amazing. I will post that in the description below right after this video. And 
Captain Sean, thank you so much for being here. I want to thank everyone in the chat for being here. All subscribers, everyone who sent a super chat tonight, we appreciate that. Thank you so much. And of course, our amazing moderators. And if you are watching this in the replay crew, leave a, leave a question for Captain Sean. Maybe he'll come by and answer it. Um, maybe later in the comments. So yeah, absolutely. And the um, and also too, feel if follow me on Instagram at Excitement Factory, and uh, or you look me up on Facebook. Uh, uh, always looking for new, new new friends. And if you've got any questions, let me know. And also too, is just thinking about if you want to see more stuff like the highest latitude. Um, it, you know, you know, let me know. I've I've definitely got another adventure in me, and and would like to share that with uh, you and the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have 150,000 and you'd like to spend three days with Captain Sean, get in touch with him. <laughs> well, he'll help make that happen. Uh, and that might be the magic lingerie number. Anyway, who knows? <laughs> anyway. Well, and it does include the tip. So I, I guess we would be expecting a lot with $150,000. Um, Guys, I will post, again, the link to The Highest Latitude and, of course, all of Captain Sean's social links so you can go follow him on Twitter, Instagram, all social media. Um, guys, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, Captain Sean, we're so grateful for your time, and we're so glad that we got to talk to you the first time and this time, and it just led to a great um, creative conversation. And it's, it's the beginning uh, of a beautiful friendship. Absolutely. Yeah, Agreed. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah, and also, if, uh, if you're like one of one or two people watching this, that didn't see the first interview with Captain Sean, it's like, it's just three or four episodes ago. Check it out. Um, it was awesome. We got to go in really in depth with Captain Sean um, about his career, about, um, I really like that you shared a lot of things that we would have never got to talk about or learn about on Below Deck. Even if you did a nine seasons, we would have never heard all of this stuff. So um, I think this is, uh, you guys should definitely, <coughs> Definitely check it out. And yeah, just Captain Sean, thanks. Thanks for being a great friend too. I mean, well, thank you. It's awesome. awesome. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. And guys, I'll put all that information below. Have a good night and thank you for joining us. And remember, we'll see you Tuesday for our weekly Below Deck recap at 11 p.m. EST. We'll be joined by the original, the OG Chief Stew, Adrian Gang, Tuesday. So we're super, ex super excited to pick her brain and, and one fine and one fun little plug for adrian adrian has always been one of my biggest fans and i will i really really appreciate that and if you haven't checked it out check out her uh, podcast on the gangplank yes yes listen to it guys it's a great and she's going to give you a lot of insight that knuckleheads like jason and i could never so yeah <laughs> check and that's out. why she has to come on but there is, there are some episodes you really have to listen to. So we're going to ask what those are. But check that out before she comes on. All right, guys. Have a great night. And we will see you next time. Yeah, Bye.